Hey guys, <laughs> welcome to my channel. Hi. And today I'm here Hello. with Tom and Jake. And this is Tom's first time on my channel, so it's pretty awesome. Number one. Say he hi. He was number one. Schmitty, Warbin, Jagerman, Jensen. <laughs> Say hi in the comments. Uh, hello. But we're gonna watch, we're gonna react to three real horrifying experiences with stalkers and strangers. Scary true story time by Corpse Husband. Oh, and Roald Dahl. Yes. And I, Roald Dahl. <laughs> I'll put the link to the original video in the description, so if you guys want to go watch that, go right ahead, but we're gonna get right into this, so that's yes. And be sure to hit like. Yes, like. It was around one year ago. I was 18 and going through the usual trials and tribulations of being an adult and, you know, unemployment, yearning for scary. independence, and figuring out what to do with the rest of your Girl life. From I handled these by going oh, no, on walks and clearing and my head by following the worn down footpaths of nearby forests and going to bars. Well, it all starts with a visit to one of the bars around the area I live in. I would usually just have either a Fanta or a Coke a and leave in about a couple of hours. So I did that, left the bar, and started to walk back to my motorcycle. I sling my leg over and I take a look around and I spot someone peeping around a corner. Unnerved, I try to avoid his gaze and just focus on getting home. I pull out of the bar parking lot. Halfway through the journey, I begin noticing a car behind me, a 2005 Vauxhall Astra following me everywhere. Okay, Once again, I felt yeah, unnerved by what seemed like a coincidence. <laughs> turn after turn, Not it me. followed flawlessly. Ooh. Eventually, I got to my street, and the car turned left into one of the cul-de-sacs. I, like I then breathed a yeah, sigh of relief, thinking it was just no. one of our neighbors. I yeah, pulled into the driveway and entered my house, still no. shivering from the thought of possibly having to face down a burglar or worse. And on top of that, my parents at that time were out of the country for their anniversary. The next morning, I awoke and did my usual routine of getting breakfast and getting ready for the day ahead. Mm -hmm. Last right, night's events brushed off as a misunderstood coincidence or maybe me just being too paranoid. Yeah, Later that day, around 6 at night, I went out for a walk and I decided to head out to a forest around 5 miles away. Why would you go to a forest? I arrived five and miles began walking away? down one of the dirt trails, just <laughs> enjoying the remainder of the sunlight before the sun went down. Okay. Around 500 meters up the trail, I yeah, right? was being watched. What's he doing at Star I took a cursory look around and saw some movement in the trees. My first thought is a deer, deer or maybe some birds. Yeah, right. so I look around a bit and away. see nothing, no people. It's completely silent. I press on anyway, thinking that I'm just okay. being too paranoid. Okay. Yeah. Keep on the way back up the trail, no sooner than five minutes later, I hear rustling noises coming from the trees and bushes. Oh God! <laughs> I turn around to see someone coming out of the bushes. They were tall, there? dark, and <laughs> wore a hoodie with the hood up which obscured everything on his face off. besides his eyes. They yeah. say the eyes are the window to the soul, and well, this guy just from his eyes alone looked insane. Steve <laughs> and to top it off, he laughed. Steve and this laugh wasn't just a small chuckle. It was a fully formed Pennywise the Clown laugh. It oh sent my. shivers down my nice spine, reference. which sent my brain into an unending tirade of questions. Who is this guy? What is he doing here? What is that around. in his hand? Yeah. Looking over <laughs> him, I see <laughs> he has a massive <laughs> hunting knife. I, I just turned and ran actual. with his psychotic oh, laughter no, following me down happens. the trail. But my brain thinking of more and more screwed up things this so guy would do if he caught me. I went off the usual trail and into some lesser used ones. This, I would argue, was my scared. biggest mistake. Oh, no. He followed me down it laughing <laughs> it and yelling incoherently. I looked back and didn't see him, so I hid in the bushes and stayed as still as possible. Okay, crazy. I hear footsteps and heavy breathing. He stops, looks around, and continues on. I waited until I could no longer hear him, and then I make a break for it and start running back. After I break from the bushes, I hear a yell. It's darker now, and I can't see him. I keep running until I reach the place I parked my bike. Right next to it was the same car I had seen the night before. Then I heard, There you are! yelled right behind me. 
I grabbed my keys, got on my bike, and sped off going as quick as my crappy 125 would allow me to go. I arrive home and put my bike into the back garden. I then stay hidden in my house for the rest of the evening, almost unable to sleep. I want a front garden. I woke up in the middle of the night around 1 a.m. to sirens and yelling. I take a peek out of the window and I see police and ambulances in the middle of the street. I watch as they take a man struggling against the police out and throw him into a police car. What? I watched a little longer and the police took him away. I went to sleep safe with the knowledge that I and my neighbors were safe. The next morning, I went to the police station and told them I was there about the incident last night. They took me to a detective's office, and I told them everything that happened from the last two days. They told me that the guy had tried to break into my neighbor's house, and he got the idea that I lived there from the fact that he also owned a motorcycle, and that my neighbor had left his in the driveway that night. Turns out, the guy suffered from mental illnesses and was off his antipsychotic medication. After a bit of questioning, I left the police station, a bit shaken, but relieved that the guy was off the street, hopefully getting the help that he needed. He was gonna come after him. Right, he's like, dude, you drive a bike. All right, dude. I'm I'm gonna break in your house. I'm gonna break in your house. And water your My girlfriend is 17, (laughs) and she has two outdoor working type jobs that she loves. She works up in the hills of Western Australia where she has to drive an um, hour each day to get to her work. It kind of sucks as there's no mobile connection up there so I have no idea the times that she gets home from work. She works as a high ropes course instructor at a campsite for kids and adults that come for the day. Sometimes she can work pretty late and ends up driving home when it's really dark. And let me say she doesn't exactly have the best car. It's well known for the amount of times it breaks Ugh. down by overheating, no. especially in the summer. Oh God. Luckily, her dad taught her how to it's fix this, good. as there's no reception up there for help. The roads home are long, empty, and barren, with no signs of life anywhere. As usual, every now and then my the girlfriend's sign. car decides to break down, and this time I was getting particularly nervous as it was nearing 8pm and she still wasn't home. She rung me when she got to the nearest town with reception, crying and unable to speak on the phone. I desperately tried to calm her and asked her what had happened. She choked back tears and explained this story from the beginning to me. She had been driving home as usual as the sun set on the horizon, blaring out her ACDC CDs down the long, empty, straight roads home. Her car had begun jerking and she was unable to push down the accelerator without it sticking. Anyways, long story short, her car had broken down again. Again. It was getting pretty dark, but still light enough for her to see as she was head deep under the hood of her car trying to find the problem. About half an hour passed, and at this time she was considering sleeping in her car for the night until help came around. Oh no, that's creepy. This was until she saw the headlights of another car coming out of the tree line about 500 meters from the dense bush littered with empty camping grounds. My girlfriend's not the most confident person but this time she really needed help so she decided to flag down the car she no, said it was a bitch. silver soccer mom car that, that was covered in red dirt wrong. she assumed it to be a camper who decided to leave late and was now being weighed down by some crazy teenage girl the car pulled up slowly a short distance behind hers and a tall lanky young man stepped oh, down no. he was wearing a soccer themed hat and dirty clothing This was usual for my girlfriend, as she's used to seeing dirty campers every day at work, so it didn't strike her as worrying. Now, the thing that did worry her, though, was that the man's car had no license plate. Uh, The man grabbed her attention by shouting over what tools he'd need to grab out of his car to help her. He seemed nice enough. He brought an old bag full of car appliances in to temporarily fix the car so she could make it back home. By this time, my girlfriend was having to use the light on her phone so that they could see what they were doing. She told me he was very quiet and barely spoke a word while standing next to her. Only the crashing of tools was breaking the silence of the empty woods. Suddenly, the man looked up at her and said, Hey, would you mind getting the duct tape out the back of my car so I can patch this pipe up real quick? 
Oh, All right, no. so my girlfriend has a good a heart thing. and sometimes can trust people a little too much. So she did as he said and walked over to his car. He shouted back at her that the car door was stiff so she would have to yank it open to get inside. She pulled open the door and was struck by the foul smell of body odor. <gasps> The car was filthy and oh, full of I tools. Gonna say dead she spotted there the duct tape among a pile of rusty <laughs> tools in the far seat and was reaching over dead the seat to get order. it when she felt someone shove her by her back legs into the car. She turned around, screaming at the man to get off of her and kicking him in the head as he tried to hold her down by her ankles on the back seats. Yeah, kick that guy when he head. leaned in close enough, she reached down and grabbed one of the tools laying on the floor and swung it at his head. He swung his head back and fell onto the road as she stumbled out the car with her phone. She didn't pause for a second and sprinted towards the tree line, only looking back to see the man on his hands and knees spitting blood onto the tarmac. She ran into the nearest set of bushes that led into the woods and didn't stop until she reached a campsite. She ran into a camp of two men with their kids who were eating dinner at the time. She couldn't stop crying and told the men what had happened. One of the men ran off in the direction she had came from to try and find the sick fuck who tried to abduct her. Oh, the other sat with her around the campfire, desperately trying to calm her down. It wasn't long before the other man came back, saying he had only found an empty car, which was hers, and a spurt of blood on the ground a few meters from her car. They towed her car back to the nearest town that same night and contacted the police. Nothing's come of it so far, just a few routine searches around the area That's for that why car. I don't want to travel but alone, let's just say ever. my girlfriend hasn't don't wanted to it. mention it. I've done it so many times and it's well, not that bad unless you don't have anywhere I would just rather, where you're at. I would rather just tra- All travel right, with so people. A little background information. You know, as a, I worked the night shift at a local gas station so when I was 19. I am a female, yeah, about 5'6", sure. and was the only employee in the store, the as usual. Got, um, On I Christmas Eve, wrong. I had to work the overnight is from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. Like, into Christmas Day. It was a normal night, no customers, and my cleaning was almost finished. I had just got done eating and decided to go out for a smoke when I hear someone walking towards the store in the distance. So nothing out of the ordinary until the person gets to the pumps and I can actually see them. It was a male, about 5'9", and somewhat thin. He was wearing a dark hoodie, jeans, and was carrying a gift bag. As he got closer, I noticed he was bleeding from his forehead. As he approached me, I asked if he was okay and if he needed help. And then I noticed that the bag was empty, which really should have been my first red flag. The guy looked me in the eyes, looking dead inside, and said, You want to help? Then don't call the fucking cops. What? I agreed and told him that there was a first aid kit inside and that I'd be happy to help him with his wound. Crazy, I know, but I was just trying to be nice to him since he was someone who could be a threat to me. We went inside the store and I got the first aid kit. As I pulled out the stuff for him to clean himself with, he said he needed to use the restroom and once again told me not to call the cops. I told myself that if he wasn't out of the bathroom within a reasonable amount of time that I was going to call the police. He didn't come out, so I went outside and called. The dispatcher told me to stay out of the store and find somewhere safe to be until the officers arrived. I stood at the side of the store where he wouldn't be able to see me, but I could see if he came out of the bathroom. He didn't. The police arrived and asked where he was. I pointed and they went in. Just as they got to the door, he opened it and tried to lunge at one of the officers. Oh my god. They tackled him, threw a knife that he was holding, and promptly arrested him. As they were walking him out of the store, he told me that I was lucky that the police got there when they did, and that he would see me again soon. I was a little shaken up by that. One of the officers came in to take my statement after they took the guy away. I told the officer everything that happened, and then I asked something I really wish I didn't know the answer to. What was he doing in the bathroom? The officer told me that it was a good thing that I called them when I did because the guy had shot up some heroin in the bathroom that was going to come out with a knife, stab me, and run with what money was in the register. That's what the bag was for. This guy had a lot of problems and a lot of anger inside of him. The reason he was so angry was also the reason his head was bleeding. 
he owed his dealer money and got beat because of it. His solution to the problem was robbing the store. The officer told me if I didn't call when I did, I'd either be critically wounded or dead because he wasn't going to allow me to stand between him and that money. Oh, God. That's why you call the cops. Hey everyone, just wanted to quickly mention some things before the video ends. So, after I made my most recent video about my upload schedule, I was extremely surprised by the response I received. I've always been afraid to post a non-story related video on my channel and always afraid to ask for help in general. I just wanted to say thank you for all the supportive comments, all the likes on that video, watching this video, understanding, and sending in your story. Okay, so that was... Pretty terrifying. The uh, video, Definitely pretty scared. Uh, scary stories there. I never want to go um, to this uh, police gas station ever again. <laughs> just always call the cops if you're in a situation that feels sketchy. Even if you're afraid to, just do it because they're going to help you. That's what they're there for. And always try to steer that instinct. Otherwise, people might really try to hurt you. You never know. Better safe than sorry. Yeah. As always, violence isn't the answer. Yeah. It's really not. Sometimes people are on drugs and not thinking clearly and they do things that are dumb like that. Ha. Huh. Well, um, also, if you get stuck on the side of the road, call the cops to help you instead of flagging down some random guy that might try to kidnap you. Or run five miles into the nearest forest. Yeah. Yeah, and then... If there's a day where somebody is stalking you, don't randomly go on a forest walk that's five miles away. <laughs> it's probably not a good idea. You should probably, like, tell people... We evaluate those types of situations. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. But if you guys liked that video, give this video a thumbs up. Like it up, everybody. And At least seven. If you're not if you're not subscribed, because I do have a lot of people that aren't subscribed to watch my videos, please support my channel and subscribe because I make a lot of awesome videos, so we like to have fun here. And we will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.